Liberating women from tyranny of Victorian corsets is just one of the many successes of Coco Chanel. But did you know that she was an anti-Semitic Nazi spy who went by the codename Westminster? Chanel is one of the world's most luxurious brands. Today, the company is worth approximately $13 billion and owes its success to the woman who gave it her life and name. Coco Chanel was a brave and daring designer on the rise, who nearly unraveled everything her legacy stands for today. In this video, we'll be talking about the ever-evolving path Gabrielle took that led her to become the controversial, rebellious, and wealthy Coco Chanel. Gabrielle Bonner Chanel was born in Saumur, France on the 19th of August, 1883. Her mother, Eugenie de Vol, was a laundry woman, and her father, Albert Chanel, was a street peddler. She lived in a poor house with her parents and two brothers and three sisters. Even as a little girl, Chanel despised how women were treated as second-class citizens with no voting rights and meant to live subservient lives to men. She dared to want more for her life. Chanel's mother died when she was 12, and her father was distraught. He sent Chanel and her sisters to a convent in Aubazine and sent the boys to a farm to work as laborers. At the time, Chanel lived a frugal, demanding, and strict life because the convent was run by a highly conservative sect. It's in here that she discovered that she had a passion for clothes while learning how to sew. Occasionally, she was allowed to visit her aunts, Louis and Adrienne. During the holidays, Gabrielle would spend all her time making clothes, and Louise would teach her to creatively add frills and pleats to her work. When Chanel was 18, she was given a choice. She was definitely not about to spend the rest of her life as a nun, so she chose to leave the convent. She went to an all-girls finishing school in Moulin, France. Because of her circumstances, she couldn't afford it, so she enrolled as a charity student. Just like other charity girls, Chanel was treated differently compared to the wealthier girls. She graduated at 20. Feeling very ready to face the world on her own, she got a seamstress job. She loved what she did, but something always bothered her. She didn't see a future in being just a seamstress. She wanted more. She was drawn to the nightlife. She knew she could get the much more glamorous life she wanted by joining the musicals, and she made her debut singing in a cabaret. Moulin was always packed with off-duty soldiers because it was a garrison town. She was beautiful and talented, so she easily gained the attention of soldiers who strolled into the music halls to amuse themselves. She became immensely popular for always singing Que va vous Coco. As a result, she adopted the name Coco for herself. It's also believed that she got the nickname as a contraction for coquette, a French word that means kept woman. It was at this point that she met Etienne Bossin, a wealthy officer who was smitten by her. She became his mistress and began to live a luxurious life. Pearls, diamonds, and fancy dresses, she had everything because of him. At this point, she decided to return to the fashion industry. With Bossin's help, she established a millinery shop named after herself in 1910. Before long, she moved on to his wealthier friend, Arthur Edward Capel. He financed her dreams to venture into clothing, as she opened boutiques in Duvel and Biarritz in 1913 and 1915, respectively. Chanel designed simple and comfortable wear. It would later be agreed that Chanel's need to always go against the norm, even in her designs, was proof that her radicalism was hiding in plain sight all along. In that Victorian era of corsets and tight-fitting clothes, Chanel's designs were a breath of fresh air, and for this reason, her boutiques were successful. In no time, she repaid all of the initial investment to Capel. In 1919, she was able to purchase the entire building at 31 Rue Cambon, Paris. This still serves as the Chanel headquarters to this day. The rest of the decade saw only success for Chanel, and in 1921, she ventured into jewelry, accessories, and fragrance. She then released her signature Chanel No. 5, which was an instant hit and became a favorite of the iconic Marilyn Monroe. The following year, Chanel No. 22 was introduced. In 1924, Chanel launched her first cosmetics line with the release of powders and lipsticks. That same year, she also introduced her signature tweed suit, Made from a Scottish masculine fabric, this female suit made a huge statement and is still being ripped off to this date. By 1926, she created the Ford dress, which ultimately pioneered the concept of the little black dress. 
The following year, Chanel launched a skincare line with 15 products. Then by 1932, Chanel successfully staged an exhibition of exquisite jewelry in her private home in Paris. This collection was called Bijoux de Diamant. During this time, Chanel had high-profile encounters with British royalty. Some of those controversial relationships involved the Prince of Wales, Edward VIII, and the Duke of Westminster. Due to the advent of the Second World War in 1939, Chanel had to shut down all operations. At this time, she got acquainted with a German officer named Hans Gunther von Dinklage, a relationship that would eventually damage her reputation. The German forces under Hitler were invading surrounding countries, including France. Yet Chanel was very sympathetic to the Nazi regime. She had good reasons, though. Her relationship with Hans was a means to an end. She wanted to maintain her hard-won success and also negotiate the release of her nephew, who was in German custody. On the surface level, nobody can blame the designer for trying to survive a war. However, her subsequent actions proved that this wasn't entirely a survival tactic. To begin with, she still continued to work with the Nazi long after her nephew was released. She carried out all covert operations diligently and successfully. She was also an anti-Semite and tried to use Hitler's new laws to make more money off her perfume line. The law prohibited Jews from owning businesses, so Chanel tried to use this against two Jewish directors of the Chanel perfume line, the Wertheimer brothers. The Wertheimer brothers fought this brazen attack and discrimination by handing over the company to a Christian friend, Felix Amiot. Chanel eventually lost control of the company to the Wertheimers because shortly after the war, Amiot returned the company to them. Even after this, Chanel was still committed to the German cause. By 1941, she was working for the German Secret Service and Military Intelligence spy network under the codename Westminster. She served as a messenger from Hitler to Winston Churchill, the prime minister at the time. By the time the war ended, Chanel had faced charges from the Free French Purge Committee and had to explain her actions to various French courts. Due to the lack of substantial evidence, Chanel was never punished for her participation in the Nazi regime. There are still rumors that Churchill helped her escape justice, none of which were ever confirmed. Determined to put this ugly stain behind her, Chanel moved to Switzerland. Now in her 70s, Chanel relaunched her Couture House in 1954. The following year, Chanel introduced the signature 2.55 bag. This bag remains iconic for its gold chain and quilted leather design. In 1957, the two-tone shoe was introduced. This iconic piece of beige leather with a black toe cap was the first of its kind. It was an instant hit with the ladies because it was said to make the legs appear longer. Even in old age, Chanel kept on designing up until the 10th of January 1971, when she died. The 87-year-old is said to have died in her sleep in her apartment at the Hotel Ritz. Her last words, as reported by her maid, were, You see, this is how you die, which goes to show that her ego never faulted. Her assistants took over and released several posthumous collections that performed exceptionally well. In 1983, the Wertheimer brothers announced Karl Lagerfeld as the new creative director for Chanel. This announcement was no surprise because he was already known for his work at Fendi. He began to design haute couture, accessory, and ready-to-wear pieces, undoubtedly adding a sense of direction that the brand had lacked since Chanel passed. By 1987, accessories were becoming the most lucrative part of the Chanel brand, and as such, its first line of watches were introduced. The rectangular dial of watch was inspired by the stopper of the number 5 fragrance and the shape of the Place Vendôme. This brilliant design is accredited to Jacques Halleux. In 1996, Chanel SA was passed to Alan and Gerard Wertheimer, Jacques Wertheimer's sons. Both brothers are still chairman of Chanel to date. Karl Lagerfeld died in 2019, and the current creative director is Virginia Viard. Even though some of Coco Chanel's decisions nearly cost her everything, her determination to succeed on her own terms in a man's world helped House of Chanel get where it is today. Staying true to her own famous words, My life didn't please me, so I created my life. She was able to rise above her mistakes and persevere.